Hello and welcome to myshakespeare.com. My name is Greg and I'm here to give you a quick tour of the My Shakespeare website. What you see here is our homepage and we currently offer these six Shakespeare plays. These are media rich, full text versions of the plays that are designed to give you an interactive experience when reading Shakespeare. We have two basic sets of features. First, in the left hand list here, we have what we call our interactive content, which is free to anybody in the world who visits the website. And second, over on the right, we have what we call our study tools, which are designed for study or classroom use and which require a user to be logged in in order to preserve a user's notes, annotations, and quiz work. You see that all of these features are listed on our homepage, but let's jump into a play so that I can show you how these features work with the text. So let's head to Macbeth, and then I'm going to use the play menu in the upper right here to go to Act 1, Scene 7. The approach with the My Shakespeare editions of Shakespeare plays is to always keep the Shakespeare text front and center, and then offer various kinds of support to help you work through a scene, including a scene summary right here at the top, with quick reminders about the characters, and a little overview of the scene itself. Once a user starts reading the scene, we have other interactive media built right in. The first thing to point out is the interline gloss. You'll see that some of the words and phrases are in bold. These are especially difficult or obscure words, so we've put a gloss right underneath to help make the meaning clearer. And at the top of each page, you'll find a toggle switch for turning the gloss off and on, depending on your preference. Then, in the left-hand margin, you'll find three different kinds of buttons. The first one is our audio playback button. We've recorded the entire play with our actors so that you can hear Shakespeare's language at a read-along pace. If it were done when tis done, then twere well it were done quickly. Now let's jump to the third icon here, which is our plain English translation. These buttons also cover the entire play and are meant to help you get a general sense of what a character is saying in contemporary English so that you can make faster progress with Shakespeare's language. The third type of bubble in the left-hand margin, right between the other two, is a performance video. My Shakespeare does not offer a performance of the play itself. Instead, we have our actors performing chunks of text, usually as just a single character, and only for the meteor passages in any particular scene. When you hover over the button, you'll see this pop-up that tells you which lines of the play will be covered in this performance video, and those same lines appear in a yellow highlight. So let me play back just the first line of the video for this Macbeth soliloquy. If it were done when tis done, then twere well it were done quickly. In this case, Macbeth is alone on stage anyway, but we take a similar approach even when the characters are talking to each other. Let's jump down for a line from Lady Macbeth when she's talking to her husband. Was the hope drunk? Wherein you dressed yourself? Hath it slept since and wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely? Next, at the bottom of every scene, we have interviews with our characters in character. We bring the characters into the TV studio and our interviewers walk through the entire scene in an interview format. Welcome back, everybody. We're at the Macbeth Castle where King Duncan is being hosted for a visit. In this case, it's a 12-minute interview, and it starts just with Macbeth, just as the scene itself does. But the interviews are also designed to cover the action of each scene as well. So let's jump ahead to the point where Lady Macbeth comes in, and I'll just play about 30 seconds of this. Which or leaps itself and falls on the other. Oh, there you are. Oh, dear. Duncan's almost finished with dinner. What are you doing here? Has he asked for me? Of course he has. Would you mind if we just had a second? Not at all. I think you should share what's on your mind. You're not going through with this. The interviews are a great way to get a sense of what the characters are up to and of the action of the scene as a whole. They're also a great way to generate discussion in a classroom setting. Finally, we've also put footnote material into the solid red buttons in the right-hand margin. Sometimes, as an animated movie, as with this explanation of the word trammel. Trammel comes from the Latin trimacula, 
which means three meshes. And sometimes is a pop-up with text explanations, as with this footnote on Lady Macbeth's use of the metaphor of hope. So now let's jump to our study tools. Since the study tools are where the user can create his or her own content, these features require that you be logged into the website. Users can log in through the login button in the upper left, and you see here that we offer both Clever and Google single sign-on options. Users can click the register button if they are creating an account for the first time. So I'll go ahead and log in here by using my Google single sign-on. Now the grayed out study tools have become red, so I know I'm logged in. We have four kinds of study tools on every scene, and the work of an individual user is preserved in the notebook, which you see at the top here. But we'll talk about the notebook more after we review the tools themselves. The first two tools are the pairing of highlighting and annotation. I just click and drag on some text, and the highlighting window opens up. There are four colors for highlighting, so that each user can come up with their own system of what each color means. Or a teacher might make assignments that depend on the color coding of your highlights. You'll see that I can also write a note that's related to the passage. And I can even come up with my own system of tags, which I can use in the notebook later to sort different kinds of notes. Let's take a look at a note I've already created for a Lady Macbeth passage. Let's imagine I've been asked to track both Lady Macbeth as a character, as well as the theme of persuasion. So I've added those tags, and I wrote a note about what I think Lady Macbeth is doing here. So that's highlighting and note-taking, with the option of tagging as well. And I'll show you how that gets stored in the notebook in just a minute. The other two study tools are found as buttons in the right-hand margin. We have a set of quiz questions in each scene, which is the question mark button here. The quiz questions are not designed to be used for formal assessment, but are meant to be used to check for understanding as you read the play. So, users can change their answers, and both right and wrong answers include explanations. The quiz question answers are recorded in the notebook so that students can show that they've used the quiz features when reading the play. Finally, we've included free write questions in each scene. These are questions that have been designed to encourage reflection about plot, character, language, and even performance. What a user writes in this text box is also saved in the notebook, and notice that I can add tags to what I write here too, if I want to connect my answers to other class projects. So let's round out our tour of my Shakespeare by going to the notebook now. When you arrive at the notebook, all the content you've created is listed below, but you can also sort that content to get more specific results, sorting by any combination of acts and scenes, highlighting color, tags, and or quiz answers. And then you can export those filtered results for your own use or to pass along to a teacher or classmate. So let's just say I've been asked to turn in all of my work for Act 1, Scene 7. I'll filter just for that scene. Then I'll go ahead and expand all of the entries. So you can see my work here. And I can even edit that work in the notebook itself. If I wanted to, for example, complete this free write question here in the notebook but I could also change or add tags as well as highlighting color from my annotations. Then I just hit the export button, which gives me a PDF that I can pass along to my teacher or classmates and for my own use later. So that's the quick tour. We hope you find my Shakespeare to be a great help to your experience of reading Shakespeare. And please never hesitate to contact us if we can be of further help, which you can do through the contact button at the bottom of every page. Thanks for listening.